Come on. Over here. Jackson. Calm down. They're doing the delivery? Why are they doing the delivery? What are they doing the delivery of? No, Very churchy. What? I, I wanted. Yeah, but not the way the Coke is. I mean, there's things you can. This is more of a better idea, yes. If you're going to deliver product, yes. I know. <laughs> They, it's also coronavirus season, and people legitimately don't know where their food has been from the grocery store, much less from a bunch of kids coughing on crap. I don't agree with any of that. We're going to have to have a discussion. The longer this goes on, the more I'm thinking you and I need to be like, all right, team. No. 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 I want people to go talk to people about Jesus, sure, but not hand out token. Do it next year, maybe, when relationships are built. More.
is prayer, stale tradition, ritual, the love charm, part of some religious checklist, done to appease a higher being so we can get what we want, or at least only the light we were. Prayer has been redefined and twisted and confused, but at its essence, prayer is simply talking to God, the God who spoke the universe into creation, who gives us life and breath, who holds all things together. This God wants us to talk to him in the vastness of all that exists. He actually cares about us personally, individually. How can we not pray to such a loving God? Wherever we are, how can we not thank him for what he's done or cry out when we need help, when we need forgiveness and we're afraid, when we give thanks for our blessing or question where our next meal will come from? Why would we live a life apart from him? It's not about formula. How could any posture or well-chosen word impress the author of time and space? With simple obedience, God has made himself available to us. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to trust in him, to acknowledge our dependence on him, to draw near to the one who loved us first. Approaching with confidence, because Christ has torn away the veil. He's washed away the sin that kept us from his presence. And we live in relationship with our Lord. And so we ask that his kingdom come. His will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. That is prayer. Good morning, Living Water. After a rainy week, it is a great day to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the sunshine today. Amen? Amen. Amen. We start off this morning with just a few announcements. First of all, I'd like you to, or excuse me, I'd like you to remember that we are having our profession of faith class early next year. We have a couple of people signed up for that, and we are giving them mentors as we speak. But if any of you would like to make profession of faith, contact myself or Sandy and we will get hooked up, get you hooked up with that. We have the food bank coming tomorrow, which is Monday, October 4th. So if you are in need of food or you would like to help out with the food bank, that happens tomorrow from 4.30 to 6 o'clock over at the Sheldon Armory, which is just a couple of blocks away from here. If you need food or you'd like to help, contact myself or Barb Hipma, and we will get you signed up for that as well. We have one more announcement for you, and that is these sheets right here. These sheets are the nomination sheets that I've been talking to you about for the last couple of weeks. Well, we are handing them to you today. After offering, Jay will be coming around with his helper, and he will be passing down the sheets to all of you. In other words, he'll fill them out by the end of today. Now, there's a caveat to this. I do not want to see anybody in the middle of the sermon going, I don't know, I think Dana Howry would be good at this, right? No, no. We're asking that you fill them out right after worship and turn them in at the Welcome Center. But you're all going to be getting one, so hold on to them. Fill them out at the end of worship. It's front and back, administrative elder on one side who sits on council, and care elders on the other side. And then turn them in at the Welcome Center when you are done. You can leave them anonymous. That's fine. We don't need names. But just wanted to bring that to your attention to have these filled out at the end of worship today. As always, we want to remember our offering. There are seven ways that you can give, several ways that you can give. You can go to forallwhothirst.churchcenter.com forward slash giving or text your amount to 84321 and follow the prompts. And as always, offering baskets for physical gifts will be passed during the first song, and you can mail in what you feel called to give to either campus or in city or here at Sheldon. I think that's all we have for announcements this morning. Let's open this time with a word of prayer. Bow your heads if you would.
Father, we come before you today thanking you for the gift of worship. We come before you today thanking you for the gift of your word. We come before you today thanking you for the gift of prayer, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And so, Father, all of these ways, all of these venues are ways that we can not only be uplifted, but your name be praised. And ultimately, Father, that's what we are asking that we would do well this morning because your spirit is at work here. So we ask, Father, that we would meet your spirit where it is in this place. And in the process, we ask that we would be energized to face the week ahead and your name would be praised because ultimately, Father, your glory is the most important. May we honor you well this morning, Father, and we thank you for the opportunity to do it. We pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Good morning, Living Water. Please stand and join us as we worship today. And for those of you watching online as well, good morning. to worship this morning comes from 1 John 1 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin and it's in that uh, idea this morning as we're going through communion that we walk in the light of Jesus and we have fellowship with one another uh, because his blood does purify our sins but our prayer is also that we don't just do that today when we leave we also want to make sure that we're walking in the light having fellowship um, in the rest of our daily lives as well. So we're going to continue with worship um, this morning. Please continue to join us.
Scriptures 
the first of which comes from Matthew chapter 6, the second of which from 1 John chapter 5. So first of all, if you have your Bibles, open them with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to be reading verses 9 through 13. Again, that's Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. Starting with verse 9, it says this. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In our second passage from 1 John 5, verses 14 through 15, is what it says. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Let's bow our heads in a time of prayer before our Lord this morning. Father, we come before you and proclaiming that promise we just sang in the song. Holy, holy, holy are you indeed, our Lord God Almighty. Father, that's what we honor and worship and praise today, you and your majesty. And Father, your scripture continually gives us little pieces of that majesty. And so, Father, this morning, as we dive into your scripture, as we learn more about prayer, as we open your word to see how through prayer you are glorified, we ask that you, that you would bless the mouth of the one who speaks on your scripture, and you would open up all our hearts so we might hear your truth within us. We pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Friends in Jesus Christ, we join with one another this morning, worshiping our Lord and Savior through the power of the Holy Spirit. As today, as you've heard throughout the morning thus far, we start a new series. And if you recall, our last series was about returning to our roots and focusing on who we as a church universal, and specifically who we as living water are called to be. And... As I was meditating on what that looks like for us here at Living Water, it occurred to me that with every new beginning, every new season, if you will, we're told to inquire to the direction of our lives from God. We're told to inquire to God and ask where we are heading. In other words, at the beginning of every new season, we are told to pray. And then it also occurred to me that as much as we as Christians talk about praying, there are many of us who perhaps really don't know what prayer is, much less how to actually do it. And for others who do know the importance of prayer, it's always good to be reminded and refreshed as to not only what we pray about, but why we pray. And this is especially needed in all things but really when a new season has begun. And so, in this series through the month of October, we're going to be talking about the basics of prayer as well as its importance and focusing today on what and why we pray and later getting into the how we are told to pray. And we are, of course, using Matthew's book, Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer as an outline for what this series will be. So throughout the rest of the series, we'll be reading Matthew 6 every morning and then the main passage after that. And as we start this series by looking at the concept of prayer, by breaking it down into the basics, I think this morning there are two questions that we need to look at, which many may not have pondered. And they are, what is prayer and why do we pray? And regardless of how much or how little we pray, the, these questions are extremely important because there is power in our prayers. So we should understand exactly what we're doing when we pray to the Lord. In other words, prayer, I think, is something that we as Christians often take for granted. That is just something that we do. But when's the last time we actually thought to ourselves, what is prayer? And why am I doing it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We start with the first question. What exactly is prayer? Well, I think we find part of our answer in our first John text for today, specifically in verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he 
hears us. And here we see two key things. First, we see that prayer, my friends, is an act of trust because the author clearly states that prayer is an act of having confidence that the Lord will hear us. In other words, prayer is an act of faith. But what is that act of faith? And that's the other thing we can glean from this passage, which is prayer is an act that we take that approaches God. In short, prayer is us approaching God with our words for the things that are in our heart. And that's all very technical language I just used, but I think I have a quote from a famous man that you all know, the evangelist Billy Graham, that sums up, in a nutshell, what prayer actually is. Prayer is spiritual communication between man and God, a two-way relationship in which man should not only talk to God, but also listen to him. Prayer to God is like a child's conversation with God. His Father. What is prayer? Prayer, my friends, is a holy conversation with God. It's a holy conversation with the Lord. And it's not just the evangelist Billy Graham that outlines this. Our scripture, other scriptures, outline this as well. Matthew 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Ask me for things. Seek me out. Knock. Ask for advice. So we know that prayer is a holy conversation with the Lord. But just as is outlined from the quote from Billy Graham as well as that Matthew 7 passage that we just read, prayer, our conversations with God, are not one-way communication, but two-way communication. In other words, yes, prayer is us approaching God with what has been laid upon our hearts, but it's also listening to him when he speaks back. And by the way, my friends, I think this is one of the most important parts of prayer that we forget. Because typically when it comes to prayer and what, what prayer actually is, we only view it as us bringing our concerns before the Lord. But when's the last time you had a conversation where you didn't listen to the other person? Husbands, raise your hand. Right? Because if you have a conversation, a one-way conversation with anybody, that relationship isn't grown at all. You're just talking at that person. It's the exact same thing with the Lord. If we have a conversation with God, not only in that conversation are we expected to give to him, we're also expected to learn and listen from him. If prayer is a conversation, perhaps we need to spend just as much time saying as we spend time hearing. Or put better yet, perhaps we need to listen as much as we speak when it comes to prayer. And there are many biblical accounts of how God speaks, etc., etc. But I think a great example of how God talks to us frequently can actually be found all the way in 1 Kings with Elijah, 1 Kings 19. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. And again, I'm not saying that a whisper is the only way God speaks, but rather this passage is given to show us to the importance of listening for God's voice, to listen to him when he speaks into the chaos of our lives. And so, all that to be said, friends, what we have here already is the answer to the first part of our question. What is prayer? Prayer is a holy two-way conversation with the Lord, talking to him as he gives to us back. And while we may be familiar now with what prayer is, I have to press upon you that we shouldn't forget the awesomeness of what that conversation is because the awesomeness may be lost on us for many of us we pray so often we forget just the power and the majesty that is incorporated with the miracle of prayer 
I think we do it so often that we take the miracle of prayer for granted. Because when we pray, we're not just simply communicating with a, one of our friends. We're not simply conversating with someone barely know, we, we barely know. But we, my friends, in prayer, we have a direct line of communication via the Holy Spirit with the creator of the world. Think about how awesome that is. The creator of everything. Everything that has ever been and ever will be. The sustainer of the world itself. The maker of all we can see or know or love. The holy, omnipotent, awesome, majestic, sovereign God. The holiest of holies. The creator of not just the world, but the universe itself. Still wants to talk with you. Friends, that is what prayer is. An act of trust in the Lord. An act of thankfulness. An act of talking directly with our God, the Creator Himself. And this Creator not only desires, but wants a conversation with you. Prayer is not something we just do because we should. It's something we should embrace because God wants to talk with us. And friends, that's a passion. That is what prayer is. Or at least, that's what prayer should be. But this brings up the second half of our question, which is, why should we pray? We've answered the what. What is prayer? This holy, magnificent, majestic conversation. But why should we pray? And I think our main passage from 1 John answers this as well, specifically in verse 15, though we're looking at both. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And we can clearly see that part of the reason we pray is to ask things of him. Asking God for the requests of our heart. And these requests can be anything. They can be requests for healing. They can be requests for direction. They can be requests for things that we desire. But within that request, there's also something we need to keep in mind, which is the desires of our heart are not necessarily our own. We have to keep in mind that the desires of our heart, if Jesus Christ is our Savior, will line up with the will of God. In other words, we pray not only for the desires of our heart, but also to make sure that those desires come from the Lord, not just from us. And this is kind of a misunderstanding a little bit we have in Western Christianity about prayer. Because everyone quotes the specific verse. This, that one is one of them. James is another one. We quote these verses and we say, well, I prayed about it. God's going to give me whatever I want. And the answer, my friends, is no, he will not. God will give you whatever he wants for you. That's a big difference. And that's, I feel like, why people are always worried about why they don't get the desires of their heart. They say, well, did I just not pray hard enough? Did I just not pray frequently enough? Because this terrible thing is still happening. And I will always say the same thing. Maybe it's not necessarily that you're not praying. Maybe it's your will and God's will haven't lined up yet. Because ultimately, God's will is what he wants done through you. And so if we pray and we ask God what his desires are for us, and then that becomes the will of our hearts, of course he will grant them to us. He will give us anything that is within his will for us. But the fact still remains that one of the big reasons we pray, one of the big reasons why we pray, is because there are desires and needs on our heart that he cares about, that he wants us to give to him. But asking for things is not by far the only reason that we pray. In fact, there are many other reasons that we pray. The first of which, as we alluded to earlier, is out of thankfulness. 
And we pray not only out of thankfulness, but we pray as an act of giving thanks to God. Psalm 50 tells us this. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. This is the voice of God speaking to the psalmist. This is the word of God and he says, Sacrifice thank offerings to me. Lift me up before you. He wants us to give him thanks. So thus far, we have seen what prayer is and we've heard that prayer and seen that prayer is an act of holy conversation for the needs of our hearts according to his will, but also acts as a way of giving thanks to God for his blessings to us. And there are a few other reasons that we pray on top of that, one of which I think is both extremely hard and extremely necessary for our spiritual lives. And that is the prayer of repentance. The prayer of asking for the forgiveness of our sins. 1 John 1 tells us this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And this is such an important reason why we pray, because it is only through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and our repentant heart because of the work of the Holy Spirit, giving, casting our sins to God by the Spirit that we're forgiven. We pray for thanks, we pray for needs, we pray for repentance, and it is because we can bring our needs before the Lord, it's because we're forgiven, it's because He gives to us as He sees fit, and because He deserves it, that we pray for yet another reason, and that is to give our praises to God, if for no other reason, then he is God and he deserves them. Hebrews 13. Therefore, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. In short, friends, there are four reasons why we pray to God that we have listed thus far. This is not the end of the reasons by far. In fact, there are a myriad of reasons why we should turn to God. These are just a few examples, and the book of James gives us a, four, a few more examples. James 5, is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is anyone sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And while all of these examples that we've looked at are reasons to go to our Lord in prayer, there is still one more important reason why we pray. And I personally would argue it is perhaps the most important reason of all, and it is mentioned many times in the Bible and summarized in a thing we call the Heidelberg Catechism. And it says this, why do Christians need to pray? Because prayer is the most important part of the thankfulness God requires of us. And also because God gives his grace and Holy Spirit only to those who pray continually and groan inwardly. Asking God for these gifts and thanking God for them. Why do we pray? Because prayer is the most important part of our thankfulness to God and an expression of love for him. In other words... Why do we pray? We pray because prayer honors him. And when we do so in the process, we are rewarded with an audience with the Father. In other words, why should we pray? Because he wants us to. And if Christ is in our heart, we should want to. My friends, we can and should pray for so many reasons. Because we're struggling with something. Because we're thankful for his gifts. Because we wish to praise him. Because we wish to confess our sins to him. And in doing all these things, by going to our God in prayer, we honor God by trusting him with the desires of our hearts, the sins of our life, the thankfulness of our souls. And in the process, we get to experience the Holy Spirit moving in us 
to ask for God's will to be done and witness our Savior, Jesus Christ, sitting at the right hand of the Father, intercessing for us as we do. So my friends today, if you hear nothing else, please hear this. Our prayers are important because when we do so, we enter into a holy conversation with the creator of the universe, the savior of mankind, the sustainer of our lives. And that same creator not only hears us, but he listens to us, he cares for us, he answers us, and in the process, he is glorified and we are drawn closer to him. <laughs> and in the coming weeks in this series, we're going to go through the different parts of prayer. We're going to look at how we pray. We're going to look at what prayer ends on. But for today, remember this. In the coming weeks, we should pray not because we have to, but we should pray because it is a blessing to do so. And therefore, if Christ is our Savior, we need to desire to with the full confidence that he will answer us back in the manner he sees fit. As Martin Luther says, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. This, my friends, is the importance of prayer. So in the coming weeks, as we continue the series examining how we pray and what we pray for, I encourage us, people of living water, those who are visitors, those who are watching online, wherever you are, let us be a people of prayer. Let us be a church that desires that audience with the Lord, praying for all things in our lives, both big and small, not because we have to, but because we're blessed to have an audience with our God who cares. Living water, let's be a people of prayer. Can we do that? Can we make an accord with one another this morning? Let's be a people of prayer. Not because we have to, but because He cares and we get the blessing of an audience with the Creator of everything. What a miracle that is. Amen? Father, it's easy for us to talk about prayer. It's easy for us to receive a phone call or a text message. And when something's going wrong in someone's life, we say, I'll pray for you. And then it slips our mind. It's easy for us in the morning, Father, to get up and give three or four seconds. Bless this day. Amen. And in doing so, Father, that's not really a conversation. And Father, all of us are guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. We're all guilty of that. But Father, what you ask of us, what you require of us, and what it is a blessing to do, is to have a holy conversation with you, Father, which means it's a two-way street. And so, Father, we pray a couple of things in this moment. First of all, we pray that we would be a church who prays boldly in everything, in every decision we make, not only asking for wisdom and guidance, but also giving time to listen to your direction for us. Father, we pray that we would be that church that listens well, holding up our end of the conversation. And also, Father, in regards to prayer, we pray that we would be a church who does it so boldly that we wouldn't only do it as a church on Sunday, we would be people who go throughout the week and invoke you in prayer and ask things of you and give you our concern in everything we say and do. In other words, Father, may we be a people of prayer, not because we have to, but because we want to, because it's a blessing to have an audience with you through the power of the Holy Spirit with Jesus intercessing on your right hand. Father, may we be a people of prayer because it is a blessing. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And friends, it is with this continuing heart of
prayer, this continuing heart of thankfulness, a heart of rest, a heart of rejoicing, a heart of faith, recognizing that Jesus Christ, our Savior, not only died for the forgiveness of sins, but also conquered death and gave us a pastor path to eternal life. It is with this heart that we come before our mighty Father in heaven today through the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Today we partake of this feast, standing in awe of him in the gifts and sacrifices that he has given us for his glory. Our Father loves each and every one of us to the extent that he gave his Son, Jesus Christ, to turn us from enemies of him to children of him. And our Father, who loves us, welcomes us today to this feast of the Lord. All who believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are invited to join in this meal. Because Christ invites all his people who trust in him as their Savior to dine at his table where he will feed them with himself by the Holy Spirit. So we invite you to come and receive all the benefits and blessings of his atoning death, his life-giving resurrection, and his ascended lordship. Because by sharing the loaf and the cup, Christ makes us one with him and with one another. And just as we are nourished by this food that we eat, Christ nourishes us spiritually at this table with the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Today, we celebrate communion as a sacrament of thankfulness that he is with us, even in times of doubt and struggle. Because these elements that make up this joyful feast of the Lord symbolize not just the flesh and blood of the crucified Lord, but also the life-giving flesh and blood of the risen and ascended Lord. So today, as we celebrate this Holy Communion, let's all take a moment, lift up our hearts, and give thanks to the Lord our God for this sacrament. Let's bow our heads and pray. With joy, we praise you, gracious Father, for you have created heaven and earth. You make us in your image. You keep covenant with us, even when we continually fall into sin. We give you thanks, Father, for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who by his life, his death, his resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your victory over the devil, sin, and death itself, which give us hope today. And Father, we thank you for your love. Love that was given to us freely so that we may be made holy by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. We praise you for all these things, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he died, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. At the Last Supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and as he poured it, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Here at Living Water, we have been going on a bit of a modified type of communion than we've been doing in the past. You'll notice that we have a, a table of elements here, a table of elements there. You will find under those uh, coverings, you will find that the bread is cubed up into little sections. You will find that we have the little plastic cups. We ask as the next, the first song plays, as the spirit moves you in a little bit here, that you come forward right down the middle aisle. You take a cup, you take a bread, an elder or myself will impart a blessing on you. 
we ask that you take the cup and the bread and then go down the side aisles, dumping them in the trash back there as you go, or you may hold on to them after the service and return to your seat. Well, you may also notice that uh, on this side, we have another method of communion. It's called intinction. If we happen to run out of the cups, we are going to hold the juice, and we ask that you come forward, you grab a piece of bread, you dip it in the juice, and then follow the same process. For those of you at home who are watching, who are joining us online, we believe that the grace of Jesus Christ, the presence of the Lord, the presence of our Savior, transcends the position in which the elements are. In other words, we want you to celebrate with us at home. So if you're at home wanting to participate in communion, I encourage you to do so. Go to your cabinets and grab crackers or bread. Go to your fridge, grab some juice or water, whatever you have on hand, and join us in this time and partake with us as we eat and drink with one another in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And friends, as we partake of this sacrament, take, eat, and drink. Remember and believe that the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was given for the complete forgiveness of all of our sin. Elders at this time, you will come forward. <coughs>
Friends of Jesus Christ, it has been a pleasure joining with you in worship this morning. I encourage you to come back and join with us next week as we're going to be talking further about prayer, and we're going to be looking at prayers of thanksgiving, so join us for that. Until we see each other again, remember two things. First of all, these things. Remember to get them into the worship center, and if for some reason you desperately need to get home, we will be handing them out again next week. So... Be sure to fill these things out. Return them at the worship center. But the second thing is even more important than nominations, and that is this. Prayer is a gift. Prayer is a blessing. Prayer is a holy conversation where we are blessed to have an audience with the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we get to experience Jesus intercessing for us on the Father's side. It's a blessing. So I encourage us all in this week, let us go, Living Water Community Church and friends of Living Water. Let us go and be a people of prayer in all we say and do. Until we see each other again, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us and within the church. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, now and forevermore. Yeah.